my presentation will be much shorter and very different for many reasons. Uh, the first of which is that our program does not yet officially exist. And so that greatly constrains what I can say about it, naturally. So, um, uh, so I'll just give a few slides about uh, our ideas for the program, which we hope will exist in um, fall 2021. First, maybe I should say a little bit about uh, my university, Indiana University in Bloomington, Indiana. Uh, so not sure where students are calling from, in from, but uh, Indiana is a state in the United States, which is um, uh, sort of next to Chicago. Um, uh, many people in the world know where Chicago is um, in the north middle part of the U.S. and Indiana is a state just to the east of Illinois. Um, and um, our campus is distinguished in various ways. Um, uh, we're in the southern part of the state. And um, I'm showing you a picture of the entrance to our university. Um, so if you walk into our university, you will uh, walk into a forest. Um, and um, our university is rated as one of the five most beautiful campuses in the United States. It's a reasonably beautiful campus. So that's one thing uh, to kind of know about. Um, and uh, it's the Indiana University is uh, one of the two, well, one of the three large universities in the state of Indiana. There's uh, Notre Dame, Purdue, and then uh, uh, Bloomington. Uh, we're in the south part of the state. So um, I think what I'll then do is just share my small number of slides um, uh, about uh, the program that we plan. So as I um, uh, uh, mentioned, uh, our program is not yet does not yet officially exist. Okay. Uh, um, but I will describe to you what we're uh, aiming at. So uh, it will be a master's degree in quantum information science, broadly construed. And we conceive it uh, in, as we speak with people in the QIS world, uh, they anticipate the need for the kind of program we're offering and that motivated us to um, design the program in the way I'll describe. So that's the first thing to understand. Uh, it's a master's level program. We conceive of it as, in a sense, a bridge degree. And what I mean by that is that our, we're going to attempt to um, aim the program at people who are coming from an engineering computer science background who may not have had a lot of exposure to quantum physics in their uh, undergraduate education. And our goal in this program will be to try to quickly bridge people into that world. Okay. And that's, uh, uh, the, I, that's the main assumption behind the program. Okay. So it's, very different from uh, uh, the Delft program and, and some, some of the others that you'll, that you'll hear about. Okay. Uh, so it is aimed at incoming students who are, have some STEM training, but not necessarily anything really in quantum. Um, the other point I want to make is that it's a, um, rel it's conceived of as a relatively short program, only one year. Uh, maybe a year and a half. It can vary uh, depending on uh, the uh, background and interests of the students. Uh, and it will consist both of coursework and some uh, time of a research project. Okay. So that's an ambitious thing to try to do in a year, year and a half, but that's what our, our goal is going to be. Um, it will be a residential program. It's, we will have some online component, but not the most, of course. As you may know, if you've been looking into the QIS world, there's an explosion of online offerings from companies and various universities. Uh, uh, 
we are not going to do go that direction very much, but um, so it's a residential degree program. And the idea behind that in part is so that we can uh, kind of bring people together from different backgrounds and, and educate them as a cohort of, of students. Uh, and uh, our experience in other uh, degree programs uh, where people are coming from varying backgrounds um, tells us that that's a good thing to try to do, that it uh, can enhance the educational experience to, to do it that way. It's a relatively broad uh, program. Uh, we've got uh, participants from uh, three different university schools, our um, College of Arts and Sciences, the engineering program, and then uh, our business program. Uh, so all of these different areas have some uh, representation. Uh, and then the other thing that we'll do uh, in this program which is very common, of course, in many QIS programs, is that because many of them are new, um, we, at the same time we're developing and offering the program, we have to, in parallel, evaluate the effectiveness of our education. And this is uh, um, one of the great challenges in education in this QIS world is that we definitely have to broaden the set of people who know about quantum concepts and uh, in order for this uh, revolution to happen. And that's an educational challenge. Not all uh, of the answers for how to do this in the best way are known. And so uh, we in parallel will be evaluating that. So those are some of the properties that our program uh, will have once uh, it gets approved. Um, the organization will be along different tracks. So uh, the, the, the tracks are organized around activities that already exist at Indiana University Bloomington. Um, uh, one track is quantum computation simulation. Another is quantum materials and sensing, and a third are quantum applications and operations research. Um, and uh, what I list here um, on the left are just a few examples of some of the um, uh, activities, research activities that we have going on uh, here at IUB, um, which can serve as possible um, research topics. Uh, and uh, the way this would work would be, there would be the usual combination of, of coursework, of course, um, uh, and, uh, and then some uh, towards the, um, uh, in parallel during the, the years of activities. What this means is that when we uh, offer our program, we're going to need to interact with students uh, at a relatively early stage to try to identify their specific interests uh, and tune uh, our um, individual projects uh, and match them to, uh, to our capabilities. So, um, so I, I have, you know, a list of courses and various things, but again, since our program's not yet official, uh, it's not um, uh, I, I, um, uh, probably doesn't make a whole lot of sense to go into the detail on that. I should just say that we've already been offering different uh, quantum courses in various departments in the university already, and um, so all of that development exists, and we're bundling them together. Uh, in a coordinated way to offer this uh, master's degree. So what's the status? So um, uh, uh, as with many of these quantum information degree programs, uh, because it's uh, geared towards either a professional degree that you might then get a job after the MS or alternatively, 
uh, in our case, you might use it as a way to jump into a PhD program in QIS. Either way might, might happen. Uh, so we've assembled various uh, advisors from, from this world um, who are, uh, will help guide us in uh, uh, how we are offering this develop. Um, what's happening right now as I speak is hope, hopefully next week, uh, uh, the state of Indiana Higher Education Commission will approve our program. <laughs> so we've got, we've satisfied N minus one of the steps. <laughs> okay. Uh, and I really wish I could have announced that yes, we're finally official, but I can't do it yet because they haven't met. Uh, I don't foresee any difficulty in getting approval for this master's degree. Maybe I should back up and say that uh, almost anywhere in the world, certainly the US, if you're offering a new degree program, you have to um, uh, get many levels of approval within the university and then within the state uh, that um, accredits higher education in that part of the US. So we've been doing those, starting those steps uh, and are now at the uh, threshold of approval. Um, so that's why I can't announce that we officially exist. We just can't, I can't quite say it. And for that reason as well, because I can't say that, I also can't share, you know, uh, any details about admissions requirements or anything like that, because we can't officially say that until we're approved, you know, it's, uh, usual um, uh, chicken and egg problem, but uh, we're we're ready to pounce. <laughs> Once we get approved, <laughs> we're going to uh, 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 start uh, uh, showing things uh, that uh, in more detail. So our goal is to have uh, accept a first quarter of students this fall, and uh, sorry, in fall 2021, I should say, um, and because of the direction we're aiming this program, namely to try to bring people who have a BS STEM education, but may not have a quantum background, we don't see a lot of other programs that are headed, they're trying to do this. And for that reason, we're going to have to be especially flexible uh, as we start this program to, to really figure out um, how best to do it. And so there is an experimental aspect to this activity uh, that I think anybody who's, um, you know, considering us as a possibility ought to keep in mind. Um, uh, it's, uh, it's not obvious to us yet <laughs> who might be interested in this type of approach. Uh, the only thing we can say is that um, we hope that our approach is at least one useful niche in the broad spectrum of approaches that we foresee many other people offering in many different places. As, as, as Terrell was saying at the very beginning, um, there will be an explosion of these uh, master's offerings, um, uh, certainly in the US in the near future. You may have, some students may have noticed that people are offering things like certificates at various schools, and uh, that's a good thing, uh, and that's very well suited to many people who want to enter the QIS world. Um, uh, in, in our case, you know, a degree program is a qualitatively more serious thing to establish than a certificate, because a certificate you often can't, can get without approval for from higher education commissions because it's only a certificate. But when you, once you say degree, you have to uh, pass all the hoops. Well, so thank you. Yeah, so, so uh, that's really all I wanted to say about our uh, not quite existent program. <laughs> uh, and I guess the only thing maybe I wanna add uh, is, is simply that when we do exist, we will uh, certainly um, uh, get our uh, website into shape and, and, and advertise what we've got to offer and what the deadlines are and all that sort of stuff. Obviously, at this point, um, were we to um, be able to um, uh, 
satisfy your evil plan of opening in fall 2021, uh, you know, deadlines would have to be in the spring, obviously, um, at this point. How are you thinking about catching up someone that is coming from computer science in the physics yeah. of quantum computing? And then uh, my second question would be uh, similar to what I asked, uh, Hulse, uh, what, what do you think about job prospects after a master's? Do you, or do you think a PhD is going to be required uh, to get into this field? Right. So, so for the, your first question, we've been thinking about that exact problem. So the, I should say that um, what, what we have in mind to help bridge people from varying backgrounds such as yours into the QIS world is that we imagine actually a, before classes start, a summer activity, uh, which might be on an online thing that we organize from here in collaboration with other people to try to get people up to speed. Because th th we do view this as one of the most difficult QIS educational problems, namely, you know, you people like yourself who are interested to get into QIS but don't have the quantum, you know, background. That's exactly where we're aiming our program, and uh, so we 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 certainly foresee the need for some summer activity uh, before the fall course, serious fall courses start. Uh, so I'm not sure if that fully under, uh, explain, uh, answers your question, but we're working on that. Uh, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, I, well, I, I also, you know, during, during my bachelor's program, I, you know, I've taken some computer vision courses, some machine learning courses, and linear algebra, you know, uh, all the mathematics classes that seem like prereqs to this type of stuff. So in my mind, I'm thinking, okay, well, you know, maybe this is something that, you could get caught up on uh, fairly quickly, but I wasn't sure uh, kind of what, what someone in the field would think about how, how quickly that would be possible or how many classes that might take. So. Yeah, well, certainly your linear algebra background will definitely help, okay? Because that's uh, needed for the quantum formalism. And this question of, you know, how much, you know, the amount of depth of knowledge of quantum mechanics required to get into the QIS world is likely to vary a lot depending on what piece of that world you end up going into. And uh, we are working, I mean, we've, we've tried, we've already developed courses which have been aiming at solving that problem for our existing computer science students at our university. And we have a little bit of experience in, um, uh, in uh, bridging that gap. And I guess the, what, what I would say is that based on our experience in doing that with our own undergraduates in specifically computer science, uh, we, we found that it was possible to do that. Okay. So I think it is a soluble problem. I should say, of course, you know, it depends on what part of the QIS world do you want to get into? If you're, you know, you want to get into the hardcore hardware uh, and need to know the details of the physics, that's a different uh, ball game. But if there are more possibilities, those applications and other possible directions, exactly how much you have to know about what's under the hood is not obvious yet. It, it's a tricky question. Uh, so, Sorry if that was a little bit of a long response to your first question, but that's. Um, no, no, I, I, I appreciate it. You know, uh, I appreciate then, the extra detail. Yeah. Yeah, and then on the second question about jobs, it's a that's a very good question, and we let me say a few things about that. The first thing I want to say is that, as I alluded to in the beginning, the reason we're offering this specific type of masters is based on the our discussions with people in the QIS world and uh, hearing what they say about what they see as the future needs. Okay, so right now 
I think the great majority of people in, active in the EcoIS uh, world are, the most of them are PhD trained, uh, uh, who are, you know, building hardware and doing some stuff like that, and know enough about the physics to be able to, uh, to match to some of the coding needs. You know, and that will, of course, all, always exist. But uh, in the future, we can't have only PhD trained people <laughs> to build the QIS workforce. That, that's not going to work. And many uh, QIS leaders have made this point. So, um, so that's the reason why we're, we've decided to offer this type of degree. Now, as for the sp specific jobs, uh, that is not totally clear to us. Uh, when we meet and talk with the QIS people, they say they have future needs for MS level trained people, but it, it depends on details. And that's why we, I guess the way I envision it is that um, uh, it could be that, I assume that some fraction of the people who would be trained in our MS program would go get QIS jobs directly, but then another fraction might use it to say, get into a QIS related PhD program somewhere else, okay? And I have no idea what the relative portions of those kind of two groups might be. And that's why we um, are um, positioning our program as a, we, as a bridge program. We, we, we have a couple of places where the bridge can lead, <laughs> uh, but ha exactly what fraction of people might do A and B, it's unclear at the moment to us. And so we're going to emphasize flexibility in, um, uh, in meeting the needs of our students. So I'm afraid that's the best I can do in answering your, your second question. Uh, it, it is, um, uh, it, it, we, we are making an attempt to anticipate a need. And as the need evolves as a function of time, we will tune our degree appropriately. Uh, um, and uh, that's what happens when you offer a, a degree in a rapidly moving environment. Um, you have to give different uh, shots at this kind of um, training to see what's really going to work. And um, that's what I can tell you. Gotcha. Well, yeah, that's, uh, I, I, I appreciate the adaptability because uh, definitely from what you're saying, it definitely seems like you're it's something you're going to have to kind of build uh, yeah. your, yourself towards, you know, a specific goal almost. Well, one of the things I certainly know is that um, when you look in detail at the educational culture and background of many people trained in engineering and computer science, it's very different, <laughs> you know, it, and, you know, something that we, you know, the things that we would need to say, teach somebody in computer science uh, with a BS computer science background to get into QIS are not going to be the same things we might need to do to educate somebody from say a double E electrical engineering background into QIS. They're not going to be the same. We're, and we're going to have to glue this, uh, these, these paths together. But, and then in addition, these different people may have different interests for what they want to do after the MS. So we will have to individualize um, our offerings in some way to accommodate that. Gotcha. Yeah. Th thanks so much for answering my question. Yeah. It's, a, it's, all, it's an awful lot of fun trying to figure out and anticipate where the puck will be in three or four years. Yes. Um, there's a lot of risk there, but uh, that's what makes it fun, in my opinion. The only thing I can say is that we, we certainly have interest. I mean, um, we, you know, that simply when we said we were going to try to offer the degree, we started to get people interested. Okay, so that to me is a sign that uh, there is some hope for our idea. Yep, the wind's blowing in the right direction. Okay, hey, yeah, please. Uh, hey, Heather, um, so uh, I too, like uh, Adam, uh, uh, belong to the classical computing background. 
I'm currently an employee at Intel. So, uh, but I have a really great interest in quantum computing. So I'm really, really impressed uh, with um, the fact that, you know, how your program helps bridge to the quantum world. So that is uh, kind of the exact thing that we require. So uh, yeah, a uh, great thing about that. So my question, uh, my first question is uh, basically, um, so since your uh, program is still uh, pending in approval, um, is there, uh, could you provide us with a link or uh, some way that we could, uh, you know, uh, get the message that uh, your program has been approved and it would be taking place? Um, and uh, the second question is that, um, so since this is uh, just the beginning of your program, uh, uh, I'm assuming that the number of uh, the application intakes wouldn't be much. Your uh, the number of students that you would be admitting wouldn't be much. So could you give us a, a number, estimate number on how many students would you be admitting? Uh, uh, yeah, uh, so uh, to answer the second question first, um, uh, I'm guessing wildly. <laughs> Uh, of maybe 10-ish to 20, I, I, I have no idea, really. Um, uh, all I can say is that um, I'm not uh, too worried because if it's, you know, uh, it's, I assume it will be a very small number and we have plenty of resources to accommodate uh, a small number of students in the beginning of our program with all the existing course infrastructure that we already have developed locally. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm anticipating small numbers, but I have no idea, really. Uh, so that's the answer to your second question. And then for the first, um, uh, maybe, uh, uh, maybe I could send a message to Terrell's uh, uh, um, place when we get our approval. If that seems to be a, a reasonable place to uh, spread the news and um, that's probably what all we'll, we'll do. Please, yeah. please do. Yeah. Thanks I, a lot. Uh, also, uh, uh, one more thing. Um, so how uh, well, uh, I, I just wanted to know whether um, the your labs at your place are well equipped for the research uh, into this particular field. So uh, could you give some insight on that? Yeah. So. The other thing we're doing with our program is we're tuning it to the local expertise that we have. And uh, we've got uh, a kind of, it's, it's a, uh, our, our program, our MS program is kind of a variety of things in uh, business engineering and physics, math, uh, chemistry, and it's rooted in the specific things that our, our, our research is locally um, involved with. And uh, uh, when I send out this link, when we get our um, uh, course approved, uh, I'll include links to our you know, quantum information center that's got uh, most of that information together. Um, so we, you know, we, we are not, um, we're, we're not a one-stop shopping place for anything. Definitely not. Um, uh, so there's some there's a, a few a, a specific set of specific things that we're, we're, we do in the QIS world, but uh, by far <laughs> there's many the great majority of things we don't do. So uh, that should be kept in mind um, when uh, if you apply, uh, need to take a close look at um, at the details of our activities. Um, uh, to make sure it's a good match for you. Great. Uh, thanks a lot. Okay. In the interest of time, um, Mike, thank you very much. I'm, I'm excited. Uh, I know you've got fans out there. I know people are sending me stuff about your program as it advances. So, uh, <laughs> Uh, and include me in that fan club too, because again, you know, it's it's all about raising the education for the whole ecosystem. So I, I personally, I think you're you're spot on with your strategy because that's that's what I see as well for whatever that's worth. But uh, yeah, so we'll be watching, and uh, folks, I'll be certainly doing my best to have the most recent information as things develop 
in uh, not only uh, in Indiana, but also other programs. So I'll try to keep that website evergreen and useful for you because uh, we all want you to uh, move forward on your education. So, okay, Mike, thank you. Any last parting words before I, we, we go off to the lovely University of Wisconsin? No, other than that, I've, uh, I've been done scientific collaboration work with people at UW as well, so I uh, have many positive things uh, to say about uh, this time. Yep. Notice, by the way, see how all these universities are connected, folks? There's a in pretty interesting social network going on uh, in our in our eyes right in front of us right now. But uh, it's, it's true with the whole industry. It's small, and then people know each other and work together a lot. So. Anyway, uh, thanks, Mike.